give the Lord a hand and praise for this house today. Let's let everybody that's listening on the internet know that this is a house of worship. So now that means you got to do a little more than that. Let's just say it was, I don't know who your favorite sporting team is. But let's just say it's the last few seconds and they're about to win. Yeah. Now let's give the Lord a hand for you. Yeah. Amen. That is good. That is good. Well, this morning, outside of the hearing of those who are online, we read our scripture today from the second book of Chronicles. Um, and by way of review and to cover my message this morning, we're just going to be looking at three verses. Amen? If you want to follow along, you can, because I'm going to be taking it verse by verse. Amen. Um, we're going to be reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and my message is focused on verses 1 through 3. Thank you, Elder, as she escorts the young people downstairs to teach them today. Amen. Amen. You know, it's a blessing when we have somebody in the house that's willing to miss the service in order that she might service the young people in the house. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for her. We thank her for coming forward. We didn't twist her arm. We didn't ask her. She just felt moved by God to do that. I'm going to reread in your hearing the scripture that we read today, and there is a portion where I called on some for some assistance from my brother Jerry. He's going to read a portion of scripture for me when I cue him. Amen. Amen. Now, the title of my message this morning is When the Glory Falls, and you'll get it as we go through. Amen. And the Bible says, now, when Solomon made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And may the Lord once again add a blessing to the reading of his inspired word. So today, I want to say that we are privileged to be able to go back in time to have these writings in the Old Testament where we can look on the lives of God's people. Amen. You know, we, we tend to think that we're the only ones that know anything and the only ones that have gone through anything. But these stories and these uh, experiences are written for us to know that it's not just us, that we're not that special, you know, that these things happen. You know, sometimes when things happen to us, we're like, oh, well, why is me? Well, don't think that you're so special that you're the only one that these things happen to have been happening since the beginning of time to other people. And the word of God is to show us by example how they made it through various situations. There's an answer for every problem in the Bible. If you just take the time to pick it up and to follow along. Amen. 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 The answer is there. It is our blueprint for life. So we're looking in on a time where for hundreds of years, Israel had worshiped the Lord in the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle was the tent of meeting where the Lord had given them the blueprint to build. Amen? Mm -hmm. There were certain measurements and certain types of items that were to be used in the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was movable. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because they were people wandering. And wherever they went, they had to move their church building along with them. Right. Amen. So the, the tabernacle was the tent of meeting. It was the place where the Spirit of the Lord came to meet with the people. So now at this point or another, God had given them other blueprints. And there was in the tabernacle the Ark of the Covenant where the Spirit of God dwelt and where he came to meet his people. God permitted Solomon, King Solomon, who was David's son, he permitted Solomon to build a temple. Amen. Now this temple was to be a permanent structure where the Lord could dwell and meet with the people of Israel. 
The temple had just been completed when we pick up our story, and Solomon had just finished the dedication prayer. It was during this gathering that the Lord showed up in their midst and in a most miraculous way. Amen? Amen. This was a time of worship and thanksgiving unto the Lord. I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, when we come into the house of God, besides fellowship, it is a time for us to praise and worship the Lord. It is a place where we come to, to invite the Spirit of God to come in and be among us. Amen? Just as they invited him to come and tabernacle with them, that's what should be our objective. You know, it's not just to come here for form or fashion and to look pretty in our dresses. This is a place where we come to pour out ourselves unto the Lord and where God pours back to bless us. Amen. 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 So when we gather together, it is a time of worship and thanksgiving. My assistant pastor is on his way up. He may have a word for us today, so I need you to listen very intently because I know he hears from the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, Pastor. Amen. So I am especially interested in the presence of the Lord during the worship service. Amen. Yes. I'm certain that we have met the Lord the same way that these people. Pastor, you got something? Y'all, excuse me. Yes. <laughs> I got to first. Let him make his cameo. He's okay. He make his cameo appearance for the week, and when he needs to, he'll reach out for mommy. Yes, Brother Louie, I usually don't take questions during the service, but yes, sir. You keep interrupting the pastor. Yeah, I keep interrupting the pastor. Praise God. <laughs> you people will not understand this is a family affair. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> now, we're interested, I'm interested in having us look at what happens during the worship service. I'm sure in those days, the people met with the Lord as they were doing at this time of the dedication of the temple. And I know that there have been times, and it's sad to say it's not every time, but there have been times when praise and worship was so high in the house that you could feel the very presence of the Holy Spirit in them. Well, he knows how to walk now to people. So guess what, come on mommy. The pastor said he had enough of the spotlight. Amen. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Praise God. So, sometimes even though we can call the presence of the Lord in our midst, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want you to understand that we are serving the same God who met Solomon and his people. And he honored him and the people with his presence. Understand, when the Holy Spirit decides to make a visitation, it is an honor. Yes, Amen. Yes, it is an honor. You know, God doesn't show up a lot of times with us because we're not where we're supposed to be. Right. Amen. Now, God didn't show up to Solomon and his people because they built him this magnificent temple. That wasn't it. Amen. It wasn't a reward for them doing that. He showed up because the people had come with a heart of unity desiring to worship him. Amen. It's not what we can bring to God. We can't bring anything to the Lord because the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That means everything that you have, everything that I have, belongs to God. None of it belongs to you. It's on loan. Amen. 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 And so I don't know about you, but if you read that scripture with me this morning, I would like to have the experience of the glory of the Lord on the scale that they received it. I've read about it in the Bible, and I can say to you that there have been a few special times when I have been in a worship experience like this, where the weight of the glory was so heavy that the people couldn't do anything but worship God. Amen. Now, I don't know, are there anybody, any people in here that are interested in something like that happening here? Amen. By show of hands, I wish, you know what? We need to come in this house every Sunday expecting it to happen. See, we don't expect it. We're surprised if it shows up. As the people of God, we should not be surprised when the Spirit of God shows up. Amen. We should expect Him to meet us where we are. In order to do that, we need to understand the principles that were revealed in the text. 
concerning the glory of the Lord. If we are to meet with God and experience his power, we must meet his conditions. You know, that surprises a lot of people when you say God has conditions. Because they're taught, oh, God's unconditional. Unconditional, his love is unconditional. But his blessings have conditions on them. Amen? Yes. If you want God to do a certain thing, there are things you need to do. Right. Amen? Right. God is not willy-nilly handing stuff out. He's not a sugar daddy. He's not a genie in a bottle that you go and rub, and Lord, I need a blessing. No, there are conditions. There are ways that we need to live in order to receive God's blessings. Amen? All right. And so, if we are to meet with God and experience his power, we must meet his conditions. And that's the thought that I want to preach on. What happens when the glory of God falls? Well, first of all, in verse number one of our text, we read about the requirements that are needed. The requ it's not a secret. God doesn't hide from us what he requires of us. Amen? Right. What God needed for, from Solomon was his obedience and his, and his actions. There were three specific actions that were required to experience this type of glory. First of all, you had to seek God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. If you're not looking for God, guess what? Why does he need to show up? Why does he need to show up? If you don't want him when he gets there, or if you don't recognize him when he's in your presence, what's the sense of showing up? Mm -hmm. All right? And so we see that it is evident through the process of building the temple and the labor that went into it, Solomon sought the very presence of the Lord. Here we find him humbly before God in prayer, the words, as it was a prayer of dedication. He was seeking to meet with God and to experience the presence of God. You got to seek him and you got to want it. Amen. Right. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that God requires for us to start building this magnificent temple. Amen. In order that he should meet us. I'm not saying that at all because we can't please God with that kind of stuff. Amen. In fact, we can meet God just about any time and any place we want to. But it is essential that we are seeking to meet with him. So remember, the first thing is to seek him. That's one of the requirements. Amen. If we are to see the glory of God fall, to rain down on us and experience a great move of God, then we must seek him. We must earnestly seek him to move among us and to transform our lives and our worship. You know, sometimes our worship is a little tired. You know, we're just going through the motions. We bring the sacrifice. But you know, there's no heart behind it. We're following the words on the screen. Nobody really means it. You know, everybody's doing whatever while they're singing. They're picking their fingernails and digging in their ears. And nobody's concentrating on the fact that these are praises being sung to the creator of the universe. Amen. So we need to get it together. I know that it might be quiet in here on today, but I'm going to preach anyhow. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And so we must have a heartfelt desire to see the Lord. Because guess what? It will not happen if we don't seek him. The second requirement after seeking is submission. Ooh, the S word that nobody wants to hear. Nobody wants to hear about submission because people think that submission means that you're weak, okay? But I want you to check out what Solomon did. We're still in verse number one. Solomon did not come in arrogance. He didn't come hard, he said, look what I did, amen. I built this, my riches built this temple for the Lord. You know, he didn't come taking the credit, he didn't come with arrogance, but he came and humble submission. Yes. He did not come reminding the Lord of all that he had done. He wasn't bragging about the beauty and the splendor of the temple. He was humble, amen, and he came to the Lord in supplication. Mm -hmm. If you would for me, Jerry, read Second Chronicles chapter 16, verses 19 and verse 20, and read it loud so that our friends on the internet can hear also. Chapter 6, Verses 19 and 21. <clears throat> Yet forgot the prayer of your servant and the supplication of the Lord, and listen to the cry and prayer which your servant is praying before you, that your eyes be open towards the temple day and night, toward the place where you said you would put your name. 
and that you may hear prayer which your servants make towards this place. And may you hear the supplications of your servant and your people Israel when they pray towards this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forget. Amen. Amen. Solomon said, this is to be your dwelling place, O Lord. When your people come in prayer and supplication, hear and forgive. Amen. Amen. It takes a lot to ask for forgiveness. I don't care who you are. You know, we don't want to do that. We don't want to say we're sorry, and we certainly don't want to ask for forgiveness. But here was Solomon trying to make atonement for the whole nation of Israel. And he did it, why? Because he was not being haughty or arrogant, but he came in humble submission. Submission is essential, brothers and sisters, if we are to experience the glory of God. Yes. We have nothing to boast in and of ourselves. Right. Okay, nothing. I don't care how great you think you are, I'm sorry. Take a seat, because God is greater than you. Amen. Amen. What do we think we could possibly offer God except our worship. Right. You know, worship and praise is a sacrifice for us. We yes. don't want to. Right. We don't want to give anybody accolades. We don't want to give people pats on the back. We don't want to acknowledge God for all the wonderful things that he has done because we're always looking for a way to claim it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, look what I did. Right. Oh, I built that. Or I bought that. Or I did. I, I, I. Nobody ever says, you know what, the Lord blessed me and allowed me to do. I got stuck in the airport yesterday. I missed two flights. I didn't miss them. They were canceled. Mm -hmm. And I went right on social media and I said, you know what? I missed two planes, but I'm not going to be angry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to thank God because I don't know what he allowed me to miss Amen. that would have been harmful in my life. Amen. Amen. I gave God glory. Yes. And I still got home. Amen? Amen. Amen. I might be operating on steam, but I still got home. And I got home safe because I was safe in the master's hands. Yes. Amen. Now, when we, when we think about it, we have to understand the submission. We have not seen, perhaps, God move among us because there's no merit of our own involved. And we want credit for what we've done. Amen. Amen. When we stop trying to take the credit, maybe we'll see the kind of move that we see here in the scripture. Listen, he's the same God. So the same way he moved for them, he'll move for us. Amen. But we've got to meet the conditions. Amen. They're there for a reason. When we meet the conditions, we will receive the abundance of God's mercy. Amen. If we are to see the Lord do great and mighty things among us, we must humble ourselves before him. We must submit to his will for our lives. You know, we're all very willful. we got our own thoughts and ideas about what we want to do and where we want to go. But does it line up with what God said? Let me tell you, if it doesn't line up, you will not be successful. It's as simple as that. And this is why when we say that we're going to do thus and so, we should also say, if the Lord wills it. Because if the Lord doesn't will it, guess what? You might as well be like the hamster on the wheel, going round and round and round and round. Amen? Amen. I've seen it, so I know it to be so. I've done it, so I know it to be so. I can't tell you about something that I haven't experienced. There have been times when I thought I could do it on my own, but the Lord showed me better than that. Amen? Amen. So we must lay ourselves before God and allow him to work on our hearts. Amen? It's not about what we accomplish. It's all about Him and what He can do through us. All right? So now we've talked about the requirements that have been disclosed and we know that we must seek and we must submit. The third thing that we must do is sacrifice. Oh, there's the other S word. Sacrifice. Solomon offered a sacrifice unto the Lord. He wanted to do something to please God. Amen. And so he brought a sacrifice that he thought was acceptable to God. This is something that the church today really knows very little about. We want God to bless us. Oh, yes, we do. We want God to meet us at our point of need. But we are not willing to sacrifice anything. And if we do, it's very little. Amen. 
So we're not willing to sacrifice a lot. We might give it a little bit, but we still want all the blessings. Amen. We no longer need to bring a sacrifice to the altar to atone for our sin. You know why? Because of that empty cross over there. Amen. Jesus atoned for our sins. But we still need to offer the Lord a sacrifice that's acceptable to him. And what is that? We have our sacrifice should be that we are willing to lay aside our selfish wants and desires. Okay, that's our sacrifice. Get yourself out the way. Think about somebody else. Think about what you can do to please the Lord. That's the sacrifice he wants you to bring. Amen. We must want the Lord more than we want anything else. Are you willing to sacrifice to see the Lord's glory? Now, in verse number one toward the end, we see that there are some requirements that have been disclosed. And we see that there is a response that came along with that. Amen? It says that the people's obedience brought about an unusual response from the Lord. First, the sacrifice pleased the Lord. Amen? They came in with their praise and their worship. And that pleased God. Look how simple that was. It pleased God. And so what did the Lord do when he was pleased? The word says that fire came down from heaven and consumed all the offerings and the sacrifice. The worship and sacrifice of Solomon and the people were noticed by God. Don't you want God to notice you when you pray, when you offer up your sacrifices? I know I do. Amen. I want to be that person where God says, oh, there's my child. She's, she's praying. She's offering her glory to me. Let, me. let me listen in. That's what I want. And so God found their sacrifices. Y'all too quiet in here for me. I like a noisy church. Uh, <laughs> an amen, a hand clap or something. Go ahead and preach, Pastor. Yeah. I know it's outside your realm. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to, I want to know that you're still awake at least. And I'm saying something interesting. I know that I, you know, I shouldn't be asking people to, but I need that encouragement. I'm not saying you have to say amen, but it helps me, amen, if I know that you're at least interested. Because you know? <laughs> if you're not interested, I can fold up my papers and go sit down, but I know that God gave me this message, amen. amen. And so it, it helps me to feel like I have something interesting to say, all right? So y'all help me. Amen. It's like the basketball team that needs the crowd to be the 13th player. You know, the team does well when the crowd goes crazy. And so y'all help me go crazy. Amen. 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 <laughs> we need to offer something to God that is pleasing to him. And because they did that, God accepted it. We should be offering worship and sacrifice of our praises. Amen. Praises heartfelt that please the Lord. God should notice our passion for him. Amen? That's what pleases God. This should make our sacrifice acceptable to him. Far too often, people, we come in the church with our own agenda. I know I'm not the only one. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because I might have to call you up for counseling. <laughs> but we come in with an idea of what we want to accomplish, and many times, pleasing the Lord is not at the top of the list. Amen? Let's just be truthful. So, you know, this is what I want you to do. Think about it. If we would focus on the Lord in our services and desire to offer him pure praise and worship, worship that would be pleasing to him instead of grieving him, I can tell you right now, God would fill this place. Amen. We need to be saying to God, I'm not looking for a way out, Lord. I'm looking for a way in. Hallelujah to God. I can tell you exactly myself. Amen. Amen. Now let's talk about being in the presence of the Lord. We're still on verse number one. There's a lot of stuff in verse number one. Amen. You wouldn't think so by what we read, but all of this is in verse number one. The Bible tells us that the glory of the Lord filled the house. Do you fully understand what happened there? Solomon and the people offered their worship unto the Lord, and he showed up. The glory of our Lord filled the temple where they were. Mm -mm -mm. The God of heaven, the maker of the universe, came and met with them. 
That's way bigger than having a meeting with the president or the prime minister or whoever. Okay. <laughs> that's way bigger. But that's what God did. You know, I've been in some really wonderful services where the Lord has shown up. But only twice in my whole Christian experience have I been in a service where the weight of the Lord was so heavy that nobody could do anything except worship God. They worshiped him by weeping. They worshiped him by dancing. Some people laid out on the floor in the presence of God because it was just that awesome. We couldn't even say anything. And I have to tell you that one of them was here. Is anybody in here today, and I know that Elder LeMay will remember, Mother, you too, when we were in here yes. and the wind blew the door open and I said, uh-oh, the Holy Spirit just came in. And that's when, who remembers Maddo? Maddo was still here. Maddo came running down the aisle. People were singing and clapping their hands. I saw people here with their hands raised that I had never seen them move on behalf of the Lord before. Never. And I was like, wow. I got so full that there was nothing I could do but cry and worship God. That should not be a once and a twice in a lifetime experience. That should be every week. That should be every day. Because you don't have to be in this building to experience God like that. Amen? It's good when we can meet together corporately and corporately experience. But you can do this. When you go to the Lord with sincere and pure praise. Whew. This story that we're reading lets us know, I want you to get the idea of this, amen, that it was a time of being full. The people felt full. There was an abundance in the house. There was a satisfaction in the house. You know how you can eat so much, it's like, I can't eat another bite? That's how God was in the house. Amen. If you wanted to, you couldn't take another bite of God, amen? Man, oh man, every place that people look, there was God. Hallelujah. We need his presence every single time we meet. We need to have the mindset that once in a while is not good enough. Amen? Amen. That's my prayer on today, that we get tired of this complacency and this like, you know, okay, well, if the Lord shows up, he does. We need to be looking for the miraculous to happen every time we come together. We are the body of Christ. And the word says that through him there's nothing we can't do. Nothing. But we got to believe it. We say it, but we don't believe it. Amen? Let's take a look in verse number two at the power of the Lord. Solomon wasn't the only one that recognized what was going on, everybody. The priest it says, couldn't even enter the temple because the glory of God was so real. The priest could, the priest, like y'all hear me? The priest could not enter because they knew God was there. Now, can you think of any reason why the priest wouldn't be able to come in to the sanctuary and the presence of God? The very people that God elected couldn't come and be in his presence because their hearts were not right. Understand, the priest is charged with some pretty heavy responsibilities. But we still have this sin nature that we were born with. And there are times when we don't live up to the standards that we should. And here, as much as they were there taking care of the tabernacle, when the presence of God came, they couldn't even come and stand in his presence because they knew they weren't right. But that's not the time to turn your back. That's not the time to be afraid. That's the time to usher yourself into his presence because the Holy Spirit will make your heart right. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could experience that every day? I would love to see that type of outpouring of God's spirit where we're in the church and don't know what to do. We're all just trying to figure out, what, oh my goodness, what, what should we do? I don't know about you, but I'm just going to lay down. God. Amen? Amen? I want to see that. I would love for his presence to be so real and for there to be so much power that we sense him even before we get in the building. Remember, they weren't in the building yet and they felt the presence of God. You don't need to come in the church building to feel the presence of God. You need to feel God's presence when you get up in the morning, when you're in your shower, when you're driving to the tabernacle. 
You should feel his, bring his presence with you. Amen? Amen. We're supposed to enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Why aren't we doing that? How come I don't see nobody walking in here on Sunday morning with their hands raised up saying, God, I thank you for allowing me to be here today. Why don't I see that? Is it because we've become so sophisticated and we're so much like the world that, oh, I'm embarrassed to do that. People are going to look at you like you're crazy. No, they're not in this house. You, you guys already know. You got a pastor that'll run around this church like a chicken with her head cut off and dance when the Holy Spirit tells me to dance. Amen. So I'm not going to look at you like you're crazy, that's for sure. Amen? We have to learn how to be free in the Holy Spirit. We got to learn how to walk in the liberty that he's given us and shake off what people say we should do. Who cares what people say we should do? What did God say? God wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we're not doing that if we're allowing the dictates of the world to come inside God's sanctuary and tell us how we should worship. Mm, that felt good to me. A little about you. Oh, I like that. You know, we here should be at the place where people are saying, I don't know what's going on inside that little building, but I sure do want to go in there and find out. Yeah. Amen? That's where we need to be. Okay? You know we don't close the door on anybody. And Deacon, you go ahead and clap if you want to. I, I felt like that needed a clap right there, too. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, I believe that we could see mountains moved, people, if we would just go to the place where the Lord would meet us in a mighty way on a regular basis. We would need the politicians to move because we could corporately pray and have stuff happen. Amen? Because our prayer is a strong thing. It's a strong weapon. It's one of the first weapons in your arsenal. You can't figure out what to do? Pray! You don't need an appointment. You don't have to call up Gabriel. I need an appointment to talk to Jesus. It's like, no. Open up your mouth, and the word says he is near you, even in your mouth. Amen. You don't never have to wait for God. God is always there waiting to hear from you. Amen. Amen. And so if we exercise the weapons that we have, some of these messes wouldn't even be going on. You know, my brother was telling me this morning about the craziness that's going on on the other side of the border. And I would direct your attention to the 14th verse of this very chapter that we're reading where it says, God said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. There's the directions right there. He's telling us what to do. He said, and seek his face. There's the seeking part. And turn from your wicked ways. That means to repent. God said, if we do that, then he will hear from heaven. And he would forgive our sin and heal the land. That's all that they need to be doing. And the rest of us too. Because I don't want to see the mess that's going to be happening over there in a little bit, in four months. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to leave that alone, my American friends. I mean no harm. But you all know. Amen. We could see mountains move if we worship God the way we should, in spirit and in truth, on a regular basis. There is absolutely no reason for us not to be experiencing miracles all the time. All the time. Not just sometime and not just to one or two people. Everybody in here ought to be living a miraculous life. Amen? I know I want to. I don't know about you. Maybe you're happy with the way things are with you. But I know God says he has so much more. And all that he has, I want. If he says it's mine, I want it all. And it's not about greed, it's about the fact that I know Christ paid, paid the price for me to have it. Why shouldn't I? Amen. Because the devil said no on him. <laughs> Amen. 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 I don't like him. <laughs> I really don't. I, I, I love him with a pure love. <laughs> or hate him with a pure hate, I should say. The righteousness of God because his assignment is to make us turn away from our Lord and Savior and it's sad sometimes when you see his plan working and you know I don't give up on people though that's not my place my place is to continue to pray them back amen now after we noticed who didn't enter the temple who did I say didn't enter the temple the priest the priest, the priest didn't come in 
these very people that were appointed by God to handle his business. It was those who ought to have been close enough. Ain't that right, Pastor? Amen. We should be close enough to God to enter in when the glory is in the house. But they knew that they were unworthy of such an outpouring. Hey, when the presence and power of the Lord begins to move, it won't leave us where we are. That's the good news. Amen. If you outside, it's not going to leave you outside, praise God. Amen. It's going to draw you to come in. All right? Even the unsaved will be drawn to the presence of the glory of God. Oh, my goodness. Yes. When God shows up, the Holy Spirit allows us to take inventory. Amen? Amen. We have to take inventory of our lives. Are we, am I where I'm supposed to be? Yes. The presence of God will force you to look into your heart and see where you stand in relationship yes. to him. Yes. Remember Isaiah? When Isaiah was in the temple, and he said that the Lord's robe, his train, filled the temple. Mm -hmm. And it was full of smoke. And he heard the angels flying back and forth saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And there was a moment in Isaiah chapter 6, I believe it's verse 6, where Isaiah realized just how undone he was. He said, Lord, I am a wretch undone. I'm a man. He's a priest now. He says, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I come from a people of unclean lips. Here was the man called by God, recognizing that no matter how much God had put into him, he was still a wretch. And the very presence of God made him to realize, you still the handful of dirt you were when I made you. We dirt dressed up to look pretty. That's all. Right. So that's why the word tells us, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Right. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, that's all we everybody makes. Right. Amen. Right. What, what makes us different from the animals is that we have the spirit, the breath of God in Enough. us. Amen. <laughs> and when the one who gave us this very breath comes in our spirit, it ought to shake us up enough. Yes. So that we say, Lord, am I living up to your standards? Am I measuring up? I'm going to tell you that the answer is no. You're not. But you're supposed to be trying to get there. Amen. Right. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, get as close as you can. Amen. So that you feel comfortable in his presence. Because in his presence is where the fullness of joy is. Yeah, Amen. So. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I got a question. And, and, and we're going to be done. I know Jerry you hate it when I do that. But I just want people to know. <laughs> That, that we're, we, I'm not going to be before you long, but I just want you to understand how powerful these three verses are and everything that transpired. You know, do you know why it seems as if people can come and live their life as they please during the week and then come sit in the pews on Sunday and be untouched and unmoved by the message? You know why? Because it's very simple. You're not experiencing the presence of God and the power of God, period. You can't hear the word of God. These are not my words. Everything that I'm saying to you came out of the scripture. You can't hear the word of God and not be moved. Right, right. And if you're not moved, it's because you don't recognize it's the word of God, thereby it has no effect on you. Simple as that. There's no whole bunch of hoopla and hocus pocus behind it. The more you know God, the more you recognize the things of God, the more you want to be involved in the things of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us just where we are in our hearts. It's not what you say out of your mouth. It's not what you do. It's what's in your heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. See, you can be saying stuff and sometimes slip up and say something you didn't mean to say to somebody. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Or slip up and cuss at somebody and go, ooh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. You know what? It wouldn't have came out if it wasn't in there. Right. Amen? Right. Let's just leave it at that. This is plain and simple. Don't say, oh, I don't usually do that. You might not say it, but it's in you. Yes. Amen? Yeah. It's in you. And you know, praise God, if you have the restraint to keep it in you. 
Oh my. And ask the Holy Spirit to remove it. Because if you don't ask him to remove it, it's still sitting there waiting for an opportunity to be used. My God. Amen. Ask me how I know. Yes. Oh, God. I know from experience. Amen. Okay. Now, you, you all know I never lie. And there's times when I had to bite my tongue almost to bleed and to not cuss somebody out. And I'm like, wow, I've been saved for a long time. And I preach the word, but the Bible say that bitter and sweet not supposed to come out the same place. Shut up. Oh, but it's there. The person that rides past just don't know. And then I still got to repent because I fought it in my mind. Uh, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, I, I, I ain't perfect. Help I'm, Jesus. I, I'm all I can be for the Lord. Amen. I'm all I can be for the Lord, and that's all he asked from, from yes. us. Amen. Yes, Amen. Now, God purged these people. I mean, we hear this word purge often. They couldn't go in. The very people that God had called to be in there, but when they got in the presence of the Holy Spirit, it pointed out to them what they weren't, and they were able to pray and ask the Lord to do work in them. Amen? And that's what we should do. We should come in here not thinking that, oh, I was a good boy this week. You know, I helped the old lady take her bags in, and I cut the grass of the neighborhood written home. You come in here saying, Lord, what can I do so that people can see your heart in me. Yeah. When you say your prayers and you hear your heart beat, it should be the beat of God's heart. Amen. God allowed the people to discover his reward. Because the people met God's requirements, he responded to their obedience and rewarded them. They recognized who he was. Okay, that was the first thing they did. They saw the fire come down and the glory of God in the house. They had no question as to what it was. You do not see anywhere in that word, the one you read, that I read, or we read this morning, where they had to go to the pastor and say, Pastor, what was that? They knew what it was. They knew it was the glory of God. Like I said, if you are reading your word, you are studying, you don't have to come and ask me. Was that the Lord that came to the house? You know, or, or, or in the movie. What was that that just happened? Because you will know what it was that just happened. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. God is not hiding from us. There was no question to these people that God had shown up. They were keenly aware that the Lord was among them. And they were not running to the leader and asking him what was going on because they knew. We need to get into the presence of the Lord so we can know it. Amen. There is no mistaking the genuine move of God. If you are saved, you won't have to ask somebody else what's going on. The Lord will reveal himself to you in such a way that there will be no doubt that you have been in his presence. I've had people say, well, how do I know it was from God? Well, you better ask him. Okay? Because I can't tell you if it was God or not. Your experience is not my experience. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you if the word that you receive is of God because we know that the enemy is a deceiver. Amen. And he'll bring you something that seems like it's from God until you take the lid off the box. Mm -hmm. By the time you take the lid off the box and let out what's in there, it might be too late for you to put it back on. Amen. Right. God knows that when he moves, as I said, even the lost will recognize it. How about that? Even people that don't know God, when they get in the presence of God, will know who he is. So when your friends that don't know God get in your presence, they ought to know who God is. Yes. <laughs> because yes. he's in you. Yes. And if they don't recognize the Christ in you, maybe you need to check your barometer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not being as free with the spirit as you think you are. Mm. Maybe there's only certain people you talk about the Lord with. Maybe you only talk to other Christians. Well, they don't need you to talk to them. You need to be talking to the ones that don't know God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Our job is to save the lost. Right. Lead them to Christ. Go and make disciples of all nations, not just to congregate with other believers. Yeah. Amen. Right. And Jesus said he didn't come for the doctors. All right. He came for the people that's sick. sick. All right, we know some sick people. We need to be out here telling them what the cure to their diseases is. Amen. Amen. Clap on that. Amen. <laughs> the people, when they recognized they were in the presence of God, 
bowed themselves, the word says, with their faces to the ground upon the pavement, and they worshiped. The presence of God and his glory brought a reverent fear among the people. They had one thing on their mind, and that was worshiping the Lord. And I think that in that worship, they really couldn't help themselves. Now, we know, we teach here that the Holy Spirit will not take control of you. But a truly you experience him, you want to give him control. Amen. When the Holy Spirit comes, he doesn't have to take control. You want to give him control. And I believe that these people gave themselves over to the Holy Spirit so much that they were throwing their praises at God. Amen. They couldn't praise the Lord enough. Nobody was sitting there. No, the ones that usually clap or don't move were screaming and running up and down the aisle because the presence of the Lord was there. And they just wanted God to know how much they appreciated what he had done. Amen? Amen. I don't think that they could help it. God has shown himself in a mighty way, just as he has in each one of our lives. If you sit back and think about what happened yesterday, there was something that happened that, that could have caused you not to be here today. Whether you know about it or not, that's why we pray. From danger, seen and unseen, God, keep your hand on me. I don't know why I missed two planes, but God knows. Two of them couldn't even get off the ground in North Carolina because the storms were so bad and there was so much turbulence. They had thunderstorms, severe warnings. Maybe a lightning would have knocked it out of the sky or something. I don't know. And the one that I got on when I sat down, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I need you to bless this plane. I need you to bless the pilot and the flight attendants. I need you to bless every single passenger on here, whether they know you or not. And last of all, God, keep your hand on me. Yes. Amen. That was my prayer. Amen. Last of all, keep your hand on me. Because, see, I know if his hand is on me, everybody else is going to be all right. All right. Do you all understand yes. that when you're in a place, it's good? Yes. That's why the enemy has not been unleashed on this world yet, because we are still, still here. here. The devil can't come and take over because the church of God is still here. Amen. And the ones that hate us, they ought to be patting us on the back and saying, thank you. <laughs> Amen. They ought to be saying thank you, but they're not. But that's okay, because God said we're going to go through the persecution. We don't need their thank you. We're going to get our reward from God. Amen. 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 So here. After all of that, we see that they rejoiced. Not only did they worship, but they praised the Lord. Now, this idea of praying is throwing, shooting, or casting, giving thanks and confession. I want you to get that mental picture, <coughs> amen? Their joy filled the heart and made its way to their mouth, amen? They were literally throwing their praises towards the Lord. They were casting their prayers and their praise and their thanksgiving at the feet of God. Amen. If you ever get in the presence of God in a real way, you will rejoice. <laughs> we all worship differently. I recognize that. But I can assure you that the praise that you will have in the presence of God will not be contained. None. Will not be contained. Mm -hmm. You will cast that praise on God like your life depended on it. You will offer a tribute of praise. Being in the presence of God will make you mindful of who he is and whose he is and of his goodness and the goodness that he bestows on us. You know, we good for saying God is good. All the time. Think about it. He really is. Because the Bible says even while we were enemies to the cross to Christ, he loved us yes. and allowed Jesus to shed his blood for us. An enemy. We were in hated him. And everything that he represented, and he still said, that's okay. I'm going to give you a chance to know who I am. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so they had a report. And the people were saying, for he is good, for his mercy, mercy endured forever. Yes. God had moved among them, and they couldn't hold it in. They could no longer be quiet concerning the God that they served. So if you ever get in the glory patch, brothers and sisters, you will not be able to keep quiet about it. Trust me, that's why I'm here today. I can't shut up about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I can't shut up. I won't shut up. You don't want to hear it? Go someplace else, because I'm still going to talk about it. Amen. Amen. I know where God brought me from. David said, out of a miry pit, out of the cleft, washed me off in his blood. He said, though you were red as crimson, my blood will make you as white as snow. Yeah. And he washed me. Yes. And he poured his love on me. Yes. 
And he poured this oil of anointing on me and said, go forth and speak my word. The same mouth that was you was full of curses and foul things now preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but that's doing something. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the thing about it is, if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Yeah. I'm not anybody special no. except to him. He says, I'm going to use you to show people you can't get too low where God can't use you. Mm. He said, and the lower you get, the higher. higher oh, Jesus. You. Yes. So if you desire to have that kind of joy, or if you have that kind of joy, open up your mouth. Tell somebody. Save somebody from dying without the Lord. No. How do you save them? You didn't die on the cross, but you can certainly tell them about, about the goodness Jesus. of Jesus. Yes. You don't have to make them take it, but you offer it to them. Yes. And when God says, what did you do with my son? You can say, I presented him. And the Lord will say, well done. Good and faithful. Good and faithful Amen. servant. Enter into your rest. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Thank you all for listening today. I know that the Lord desires to meet us. And I know that the Lord desires to change us and conform us into his will. We just have to be willing. God bless you and thank you.